Hi, and welcome back to The Flamingo. This has been a fun project. Um, parts one and two are done, and we are looking at finishing this one up. So let's jump right into it. I will uh, switch over to the view and show you what we're gonna do. Okay, we have the painting on the right. Um, I really love the warm pinks and the cool pinks and the way they're playing together. It turned out nice. Um, we'll have to add a little bit of darks here and there in the flamingo to make it pop. But what we're gonna do first is the background. And if you notice here in this section that is kind of created by the shape of the flamingo, that's a nice warm, brighter spot. And then you got this one here behind the neck. We're gonna do we're gonna do those a little bit warmer and lighter. So we'll be using sap green, we'll be using a little orange, a little bit of yellow, and then some of the earth tones and Payne's gray to be the dark. Um, so that should go really well. We're gonna mix those up and get started. All right. Somehow, I'm almost, I must, I must use more of the sap green and purple than any two other colors because I have to, I have to add them back into the palette when I get a chance. All right. And get a little bit of purple on my palette. No me, I can't resist my purple. Earthy color in here. Okay. And lastly, I grabbed some of that Payne's gray, so we've got something nice and dark. And those are all available for me to dip my brush in and waddle around a little bit. And I think what I'll do first is this section in here. because it's self-contained. I can get this dropped in. I already like what I'm seeing. A little breezy, a little cold here in Daytona today. Well, cold by Daytona standards right around 50. Um, it's kind of nice. I think I'll throw a little bit of orange into that green. darker over here I'm coming with a little bit heavier green up in this corner and help me paint out that shape of the neck a little bit. And it gets darker in here too. So I'm going right to the right to the watercolor palette and grabbing that green and putting it on my brush rather than mixing it in and thinning it out. Pretty good. All right. 
right, uh, now while we're at it, that the rest of the background is really all one piece. Um, I'm just gonna grab my bigger sable brush and wet all of this. And it's okay if I go outside the pencil lines on the outside. Really, what's it matter? I'm staying a little bit away from those inside lines so that I can come in and come in tight with those and do a little work if I have to. But this will help me get the paint moving and flowing. And the reality is, is that I need more paint, Momo paint on my palette. All right. Let's come in here, start dropping some of that earthy color. And then it gets a little bit darker. those beads here at the bottom so that they don't because I have it tilted I don't want it to get so tight that it runs into my flamingo and now we've got that nice little glowing spot okay rocking and rolling now Again, because this is darker, this will cover the, the pink, so I can actually come just inside of the pink. Kind of like that. I don't like that I came in here, and I'm going to just grab that while I have a chance. And I'm going to dry out my brush and pick up this color before it runs into my flamingo. Okay. Now we can move a little bit quicker. Go across the top up here. trying to hold my brush further back than I would a pencil. I'm trying to get a nice fluid feel to it. Always trying to look back at the reference a little bit. Decide where I want to make it lighter, where I want to make it darker. Gravity is doing exactly what we want it to. And pulling that paint down so we don't have to work too hard at it. Really the hard part is when you get around the beak. Pick that up before it runs any further. Come in here. warm up some of that brown a little bit get a little bit darker up in the corners and because I didn't wet it all the way to the bird I have a chance to wiggle the brush a little bit to get some some depth and some texture and then come in and grab some more of my green Nice and dark. Maybe I just want to pick that. 
that up. I'd have that like that. Get it nice and dark here in this this spot here. And I think all the way up to here. Now looking at how nice and dark and rich that right side is, I've decided to add a little bit more color into the left. It may be too dry for me to do that. We'll see. If I can get it to run, it'll be fine. Wetting that whole edge, we've probably probably gotten away with it. Okay. Now I need to hoover up some of this dark. There. And you see it pulled up here on this side too from when I re-wet it. So we're just gonna grab that. Okay. Um, it's looking good. It's looking real good. I'm gonna try and, no, this, the salt's not gonna stick to it. We're not gonna do that, so we will Instead, to get a little texture, yeah, that'll work. We're gonna flick some water on here. There, that gives us a little bit of interest. And I'm working at a pretty steep angle, which is why this keeps collecting down here. So I'm just Pulling it off, just like that. Okay. Um, could darken up the shadow area and this line and darken up this line a little bit. So let's go ahead and get a smaller brush and take care of that. that a little bit the same thing right it basically comes right down to the beak and then runs here and it runs here And then we have this shadow that comes out and down. It's not as dark as the beak, but it's definitely a shadow. It comes down to here, like that. And we soften the bottom of it a little bit. There. Okay. Um, 
like to shadowy bit here. There we go. Okay. Um, This here, we're just going to use a little bit of dry brush to accentuate that roughness. There we go. I'll come back and do, do a little bit more of that. I'm going to go for a little bit bigger brush now. And we're going to mix up some Payne's Gray, a little bit of purple in it. Pretty thick nice and dark and we're going to put in the beak that out a little bit tap that out a little bit look at that it's looking good we need to darken this up a little bit and darken this up a little bit do the same thing here with a little bit of a wiggly line and then the shape actually does something like that all right now I'm gonna pull the beak down to there and more of that okay now a little bit more of that dark and dry brushy texture and then we really need to come down here and
this takes a light touch just the end of the brush and just do a little look at the directions where the sun's hitting them Let me do a couple up here tap it out okay um, ultimately we're in really 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 good shape I'm really happy with what's going on I want to beef up some of the, the ruffled feathers a little bit and this is going to be a little bit more of that dry brushing but I do need to get this area a bit Again, I'm going to warm up up here a little bit and let it run to pinky here. And I feel like we need a little bit more. Last bit of orange in here. Okay. Hey there, we're back. Uh, sorry about that. What happened was that the battery on my iPad ran out while I was painting and I was so into finishing the painting that I didn't notice. So we missed the last five minutes or so of me completing the painting. Not really a big deal. We were pretty far along when the iPad stopped. So I'm going to switch over the camera to the painting and talk about the things I did to finish it up and then I'm gonna turn you guys loose and I really can't wait I really want to see what you guys come up with for this one um, it was a lot of fun and I'm hoping you guys take a whack at it and uh, we'll start another project um, in a few days today is Wednesday this will be posted on Wednesday and uh, probably this weekend we'll start the next one I want to give myself a couple of days maybe work on a personal painting and then I'll uh, jump back into doing a demo. So with that, here we go. All right, as you can see, it's a little bit more done. Um, I added some splatters in the feathers and I darkened the ruffles in the feathers that you can see over here. Kind of found the shape, but I was really, really loose and impressionistic about it. What I did do was go from the warm with the orange to the cooler with the purples and blues in here. Um, I defined the dark parts of the beak and the shadows under the eye and around the eye to make that pop forward. I also darkened down the background a little bit more. Uh, that's pretty much all we did. It's finished at this point and I am looking forward to, um, starting another painting. I have to figure out what we're going to do next. Um, I'm going to look through my pictures from the botanical gardens at Mounts and see what we can pick from there. Maybe one of the sunflowers from this summer or um, something we did on one of our walks. So look for a new email this weekend and we can kick off a new project. So that's it from here in Daytona.